Lisa E. Tuk Ishulutak is passionate about fashion. Growing up in the Canadian Arctic, she dreamt of one day bringing Inuit traditional designs to European catwalks. When I was younger, I would always watch the, the runway models. And when I saw a fashion show in Iqaluit at the high school with the traditional clothes and new styles, I thought um, it would be nice to show our, our clothes, you know, traditional clothes, and updated with the fashion world today. Last September, she enrolled in the fur design program at the Arctic College in her native Iqaluit to learn fashion design. For thousands of years, her ancestors have used animal fur, especially seal skins, to make clothing. But Lisa's dreams of making a living as a seamstress and a designer are now threatened by a public relations war unfolding thousands of kilometers away. This successful anti-sealing campaign has galvanized public opinion and forced the European Union to introduce a ban on all sealed products. Technically, the Inuit of Canada and Greenland, who still depend on seals for survival, are exempt from the ban, which comes into effect this summer. Seal is one of the most important species uh, for Inuit. Uh, it's I could say it's more important than polar bear and more probably more important than, than caribou and some other wildlife species in Europe in because the seal is used in whole as food source, as a clothing um, for survival um, in the time past, for arts and craft, uh, for a shelter. The Inuit subsistence seal hunt is different from the commercial hunt that has drawn the ire of animal rights activists. In wintertime, seals live under the ice, coming up to the surface to breathe through holes formed in the cracks between the constantly moving ice fields. Inuit hunters scour dozens of kilometers of sea ice in search of seal breathing holes. Then they have to wait motionless in the biting cold and wait and wait and wait. It's a lottery run by Mother Nature because even if the seal does come up to the breathing hole, there is no guarantee that the hunter will get his prey. In the spring, when seals come up on the ice, hunters have to creep up as close as possible. One well-placed shot is usually enough to dispatch the animal without causing it too much suffering. With food prices in the Canadian Arctic up to three or four times higher than in the south, the Inuit rely on seal meat to supplement their diet. Hunters often share their catch with the rest of the community, those too infirm or too poor to go hunting themselves. Before the ban was introduced, the hunters used to be able to sell the seal skins to supplement their meager incomes. Now, it's not even worth taking the time to remove the blubber. Seal skins are often thrown out or become food for dogs and crows. The ban has dealt a harsh blow to an already impoverished population. In the last two generations, the Inuit have gone through dramatic and often painful changes to their lifestyle. In many cases, they were forced to abandon their nomadic camps for settlements that seem to have all the trappings of modern life, but few of its economic opportunities. And lately, they've had to deal with the consequences of climate change that threatens to alter the physical environment they live in. The European Union ban has already brought an almost total freeze to the sealskin market. Last year, at a fur auction in North Bay, Ontario, not a single pelt was sold out of 11,500 that were harvested by Inuit hunters in Nunavut. And that has prompted Senator Céline Hervieux-Payette from Canada's French-speaking province of Quebec 
to lobby the federal government to compensate Atlantic Coast fishermen and Inuit hunters for lost income. Well, three years ago, before all this, uh, this war on the, on the uh, sea hunters uh, started, uh, they were getting $100 for each uh, skin. Right now they get maybe $30. So of course, uh, this is the income they do at uh, this time of the year in order to proceed to uh, other income, like uh, on, the, on the East Coast, it's a uh, lobster. Here it would be fishing, but you don't fish now. The European Union ban has stirred up a lot of anger in Nunavut. I think the Sea Band people didn't do enough research for that. They're just trying to find a way to make money. And I'm just wondering why, <clears throat> like, I feel, why are you, I don't know, why are you bothering us when we're not doing anything? This is our... It, it hurts because my aunt sisters, they were, <laughs> I just get so mad at them because my aunt sisters, they lived surviving on the land and surviving on the seals during the summertime. And if it wasn't for the seals, then maybe they would like starve or whatever. I just, I don't know. It's hard to say in English, but I know a lot of elders are hurt by this. We appreciate, like, we learn to respect our elders, and this is really hurting my aunt sisters, because the seal's been with us for, to this day. So, I just, this is the way we lived. This is the way we always lived. Like. Diane Giroux came to the Arctic, hoping that by passing on her skills as a fashion designer and seamstress, she can help Inuit women escape the grinding poverty. It makes it very difficult for the Inuit in general to understand this concept. It makes it difficult for us who want to help the Inuit in developing their own uh, place in this world, to make them understand that they have to um, accept a decision which has no sense, basically. I feel upset myself. I feel it's very hypocrite to um, want to save an animal while you're killing a culture. But Nunavut authorities are worried that the seal hunt ban is just the opening salvo in a cultural war that has pitted urbanized Westerners against East Coast fishermen and Inuit hunters. My worst fear is that uh, in addition to uh, ban of seal skin products uh, in European countries, um, that this ban could have also other ripple effects uh, for other wildlife species uh, in Nunavut other than uh, seal skin products. Uh, that would have a dev devastating effect uh, on economic opportunities, especially for smaller communities that has unemployment as high as 60 to 80 percent of unemployment in small communities. Um, selling seal skin products, uh, even though it's very minimal, uh, has a, a big implications 
for a community, for a family that doesn't have any other income. Canada's federal government has launched a challenge against the ban in the World Trade Organization. In the meantime, the government of Nunavut is looking for a long-term solution. We are working very hard in trying to find other markets other than European countries. Uh, for example, uh, we're definitely interested in looking at China, and we're also definitely looking at um, Russia and other uh, non-European countries. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at seriously within Canada. Lisa Ishulutak thinks that animal rights campaigners and European Union MPs simply need a crash course in the realities of life in the Arctic. I would take them camping. Ne. I would love to take them camping. Summertime, me and my family, we always go camping. We go to our grandparents' camp, well, to my Anna's camp. And I just want to show them how we live and how my ancestors lived, how us Inuks live up here. And during the winter and cold days, we do need zeal to survive still. They're not in danger or anything. It's not like we're keeping them in a farm and giving them fat and then killing them and then making money off them. It's just, that's just how we live. And she hasn't given up on her dream just yet. Oh, I want to have my own fashion runway. <laughs> but. If I do get my own fashion runway, I'm going to have, like, all my friends, I want them to be models. I'm going to have, or I wish to have the short, skinny one, or the short, chubby kind, and the big girls, or the tall ones, or regular size, not just one size. I want, like, from short, big or short, small, to tall, big or tall, small. Uh, tall, big or tall, small. Uh. <laughs>